so what is the topic so yesterday we started uh, spatial filtering okay spatial filtering is like uh, you know convolution in time domain okay so we want to have studied uh, in our uh, signal sense systems and in uh, dsp we would have studied convolution in time domain then the convolution in frequency domain right so even in uh, dft maybe uh, in time domain and in frequency domain okay so that is something so each domain has its own advantages and disadvantages so to understand things better and uh, to know what's actually happening it is the time domain right but then to have a better ease of uh, processing it is always frequency domain same is true here also so uh, well uh, i think uh, time as a spatial domain for images the time domain is uh, is replaced by space spatial domain frequency is two dimensional frequency okay hmm. so uh, let us get started we started actually right yesterday so what sort of filters so as i told you it's uh, either convolution or a correlation it's all fine as and when the masks whatever we use as and when the masks are uh, symmetrical in nature symmetric in the sense uh, you see here hmm, the values in the corner right even if you flip the thing hmm, the values will still remain same the midpoint will still remain same had i had a four here then this mask wouldn't have been say i have a two here this mask wouldn't have been symmetrical so the convolution and correlation would have given us different uh, results but that's not the case usually usually the masks we use uh, for uh, you know, filtering here are usually symmetrical in nature well not necessarily we will see in the end of the chapter there are some masks which need not be so hmm? okay and the way you do it also makes a difference okay by the way uh, which one to use which command to use should you use convolution or correlation we need not bother if at all you are trying to do the programming in a matlab because there is one uh, ready function i am filter okay hmm? that it does convolution or correlation okay we are not that much into it okay hmm? so uh, uh, what do we use by the way the mask hmm? so here we have the uh mass okay so mass are like the uh, impulse response for your um, time domain thing right you had your uh, input sequence then you had your impulse response so in place of impulse response here we'll have filter mass okay spatial filter uh, mass hmm? okay so they come in size usually 3 cross 3 is the default we usually whenever we have mass we make sure that it comes with a Uh, midpoint okay comes to center that's why the preferred one three cross three five cross five and uh, so and so will be uh, will be encountered most of the times so the simplest of the mass would be uh, averaging mass okay so we all know averaging is nothing but uh, smoothing if at all i have an impulse response one comma one okay instead of one comma one okay say one by two comma one by two if at all i filter an image what does the image uh, uh, the sequence the time domain sequence it would be smoothen okay hmm? so similarly here okay so this is a mask of an averaging filter as you can see all the numbers yesterday i had shown you few averaging a uh, filter mask which i had uh, produced in uh, matlab okay so all the numbers put together shall add to 1 okay hmm? so 1 divided by 9 so here there were 16 values okay here there were 16 values so it was 1 divided by 16 so that you add all the numbers you add all the numbers you should end up getting uh one okay you should end up getting one okay so where do you derive this number 16 from it is 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 okay hmm? so they should uh, add up to 16 okay so as i told you one is the trivial average filter averaging filter 3 cross 3 5 cross 5 7 cross 1 average filter another filter is usually as a uh, a gaussian filter and the filter is gaussian filter we know what is this gaussian filter we know the gaussian uh, response right a gaussian response a gaussian pdf you see it's a response which looks something like this comes like a, a bell shaped one okay hmm? comes with a, a bell shape then there is uh, the shape of the bell the width of the bell right what i told you the response can be uh, something like this or it can be something like this also okay this also a bell shaped only the width here 
the width here, whatever you call the deviation from the mean. Okay, so this particular value alpha, what is this alpha or gamma? Uh, what, what is this thing? Yeah, this particular thing. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, hmm? that's what decides uh, the width of the bell. And these are the inputs. Okay, hmm? it's a two dimensional thing. Whatever you get here is a okay, okay, sigma. Okay, okay, thank you. Sigma it is. Okay, hmm? so I need to not into that. Okay, so the sigma decides the width of that particular bell shape as i was uh, telling okay so sometimes it may be like this sometimes it may be you know, something like this okay hmm? so preferably in the center uh, the midpoint okay preferably they start from the midpoint okay hmm? if at all three cross three then three will be the midpoint if at all it is a five cross five so uh, it uh, it's not doesn't mean that it starts from some negative values okay? everything will be the maximum value the peak usually is occurring at the midpoint okay hmm. so here is an example uh one average filter a weighted average filter and whatever the values that have been extracted here as you can see as and when you go to the corners or the diagonals the values are uh, diminishing okay hmm. the values are uh, diminishing okay hmm. so why do you use this particular filters by the way let us see much more uh, uh, yeah there we have so uh, filters mm, smoothing filters can be used for smoothing filters can be used for uh, sharpening also okay hmm. sharpening filters so smoothing filters are usually as i told you low pass filters but uh, let me tell you once again sharpening filters are not high pass filters okay hmm. that's a very interesting concept you'll see it when you think <coughs> so what is this uh, smoothing action by the way as you can see a sharp edge is something like this you can see uh, here, uh, more smoother, they call it smoother, better, better. So, what is the difference here? You can see it is just an averaging filter, it seems okay. Averaging filter, author wants to tell that. And uh, these images are that of filters of sizes 3 cross 3, 5 cross 5, the mass 9 cross 9, 15, 25, 35, and uh, 45. Okay, hmm? that's what you can see. This okay, hmm? so higher the mass size you get more the blurring action you get and the impact can be seen clearly with this particular dot which uh, tends to become blur and finally it has uh, diminished okay finally it has diminished and you can see this uh, the patches here okay the patches here they have sort of become you know almost uh, invisible it depends on your requirements depends on your requirement it so happens sometimes whenever you see an image with less amount of data where there are uh, you know sharp changes in the intensity so whenever there are sharp changes in the intensity it's really inconvenient for us to see it. sudden change sudden, sudden changes so to round them okay to round them or sometimes in between there will be some uh, noises some sort of noise or uh, maybe some sort of you know lines or something some intensities which are not part of your uh, what you intend them so what you can do is maybe uh, if they wash off okay if they wash up then it will give a better impression that is the idea hmm? that is the idea of averaging filters to remove most of the uh, noise okay to remove most of the noise and to remove the high frequency detail to remove high frequency details maybe for all the reasons for which you will use a low pass filter in your uh, digital communication something similar will be here also okay most of the values will be diminished high intensity details will be diminished maybe it will help in uh, transmission better okay so why to reduce sharp transmissions noise reduction smoothing of uh, false contours maybe and to have a, a blurring effect why do you use blurring effect so we earlier did not know right why would somebody use a blurring effect nowadays you have those cameras and where uh, just you want to focus on certain thing then the only option is to blur the background okay so that at least things look good right hmm? so that's it so here some interesting uh, you know a text has been given right so author is uh, pointing us to the this particular text here with their font sizes and the kind of impact they had right author wants us to observe the impact on the text the impact on uh, these uh, patches and the diminishing uh, white circle hmm? this white circle diminishing all those things he wants us to 
uh, analyze and author wants to draw a parallel between this particular uh, dot black dot with the size of the mask okay what impact did the three cross three uh, mask had on this particular pixel or a five cross five mask or a seven cross seven mask okay what impact so each of this uh, mask so larger the size of the mask then all the in the, all the texts or the objects or whatever the content in the image which were comparable to the size of the mask or smaller they simply got diminished okay they simply got diminished okay you can see here as and when the size of the mask became something like 55 cross 55 45 cross 45 this particular small dots you know the in, entire information is completely uh, washed out washed out okay hmm. entire information has completely washed out so one should be you know uh, depends on your requirement so what you want to conclude from that particular thing okay hmm. so that's why uh, interesting cases so as i told you the image a test to be is very very important and one more thing i want to tell you just observe the spooky border and the impact okay of filtering you can see this particular border has kept on getting thicker and you can see okay hmm. so why does that happen by the way what is the reason behind this uh, spooky border somebody why this border is coming up it's not part of the original image okay hmm. it's not part of the original image the filtering is causing border what is the reason somebody hmm. somebody can tell what is the reason behind the the border yeah the zero padding right it is because of the zero padding had you padded them with ones then maybe you could have got the white uh, box there okay hmm. so what i'm telling is uh, you don't want it right it's very uncomfortable right? to, to have such border as part of the image so you should be uh, careful also okay hmm. so uh, that's that now let us go to next slide So their uh, general implementation of uh, M cross N image with the weighted filter size. Okay. Hmm. So as you can see, what does it contain? Weighted filter size. You can see earlier there was this particular image, right? I told you it was a one divided by sixteen. All the numbers were divided by sixteen. Okay. That explains this particular thing. You know, all values, the filter coefficients added horizontally and vertically. One plus two plus uh, one plus uh, 2 plus 4 plus uh, 1 right what i told you and these were the values so while they they multiply with the coefficients of the x axis and the y axis whatever pixel intensity in the location the coefficient gets multiplied and you end up getting the value okay hmm. let me make one more clarification that just smoothing does not yield any results it's what you intend to do after that okay for example here was certain image from the space okay hmm. listen carefully what i'm telling in image processing just by smoothing uh, okay just by filtering you do not jump into conclusion or it doesn't give you any uh, result so it's what you do after it okay so this particular filters they are a form a part of a larger process say for example here author wanted to have uh, you know the prominent uh, particles in the space maybe okay anything above certain level okay all those particles above certain level so above certain level means what okay so for author this is a prominent thing whereas this one here may not be prominent okay are you getting okay so author was interested in or a space guy he was interested in picking all those uh, elements which are larger see this is author is not interested in these smaller particles whereas author is interested in maybe these larger particles okay so how do you differentiate how much is larger and how much is smaller so that has been decided by the size of the mask that author chose for averaging filter okay so when he chose a 15 cross 15 averaging mask so that means all those pixels which were of a size smaller than 15 cross 15 were simply washed up or from they were converted from a, a white to they had some white dots there right you had some white dots there 
those white dots became because of the larger size normal almost dark gray almost dark gray thing and then you ended up getting an image something like this so on this particular image author now will do a thresholding any value say from 0 to 255 is your uh, black and white image the gray scale image then author will now author initially what it did was he took this mask okay if at all he wants to pick the smallest of the smallest ones then he will go for a mask three cross three anything below that if at all he wants to have the medium value maybe five cross five so he would depends right the larger particles he wanted so he chose the mask and then after what it does he got an image that is blur and then afterwards okay after filtering what he wants to do, then maybe he will go for thresholding okay any pixel intensities above maybe say from 0 to 255 so all the pixels that had very very smaller sizes they were averaged out uh, because of the 15 cross 15 pixels on its neighborhood and anything above maybe uh, somewhere around in this particular range anything above 75 okay say some intensity better than dark gray or anything above 120 okay all numbers above 120 you simply make them white all intensities below 120 simply make them black now there you have it this is the original image and there is the uh, processed image i would say process this is not filtered this is the filtered image okay this is the processed image the way he wants it got this particular thing so smoothing so you might question why would somebody want to do make it blur it depends depends on your requirement what to do uh, what you want to do after that okay hmm. so that was that so the type of filter so filters need not be a continuous filters as it happened there right you had an equation you uh, you know uh, performed the linear operation right uh, you remember uh, in the second year actually convolution is a a linear operation a1x1 of n convolved with a2x2 of n shall give you the same result as the you know the complete convolution uh, you know uh, scaled hmm? so there can be non-linear filters also non-linear filters in the sense what okay so earlier you multiplied each and every value with certain weights and then you added and you uh, smoothened everything but then say consider a situation like this consider a image like this what is the problem with this image is in this particular image everywhere everywhere there are certain dots and dots okay so what is the name given salt and pepper is the name given it's actually impulse time so what is happening is this image is neither on the darker side nor on the brighter side nor there is a patch okay rather what has happened is due to some problem in the particular image capturing device maybe the camera problem with some of the uh, you know uh, the sensor the capturing sensor maybe some problem with the noise in the channel while you are capturing maybe the uh, so there have been some dots there have been certain dots in the image so when there are black dots there are black dots also and then there are white dots also okay when such is the situation if at all you simply intend to average them out then what happens is you get an image which is much more worse than the original image which is already suffering from the noise okay already suffering from the noise as i as author rightly pointed out say from this image you come to this particular image this has been a normal average image with three cross three if at all you increase the image uh, mass size to five cross five then who knows uh, these particular uh, lines right you go on increase and say you are not happy with this but still there are you know, dots are still there not the dots the dots have become bigger now every one black dot has now become a three cross three black dot okay hmm? uh, dark gray so not so convincing right and if it only go for larger size then what's going to happen maybe these two uh, points in the pcb you will conclude that they are shorted or something you don't know you will not get the clear idea when such is the case when such is the case your normal averaging strategy may not work and you have to go for uh, something better okay so in such case you go for ordering filters okay ordering filters. what is an ordering filter let us see median filter is an example of a such ordering filter what does a median filter do so in the median filtering okay say there is a value at the center okay hmm? value can be 123 value can be 124 whatever it is now here is a specific situation where in this particular small patch there is a black dot in the center 
If at all you simply average them, 124 plus 125 plus 127 plus 123 plus zero. So what's going to happen? All these numbers, if at all you simply average them out, all these numbers will become 110 maybe, right? Something like 110 or 108. So what happens is entire area, entire area, because this mass not only is here, the mass keeps on traveling, right? Horizontally and mass travels vertically from one corner. So what happens is entire image becomes sort of shady and darker. Okay. If at all this was a one, salt and pepper, salt is uh, you getting a 255 here. Hmm? You getting a 255. Pepper is where you get a zero. Okay. So simple adding and averaging this entire set, entire image becomes either it becomes darker or the entire image will become something like 140 or 150. Entire may image become brighter. It doesn't solve the problem. I want to eliminate that black dot or the white dot. The salt and pepper shall be removed. So what's the solution? Simply take all them intensities. Say it is there in center. It can be here or here, right? At some point. Then you sort them. Sort them in increasing order. Value in the center. Okay. Not the average. See, I hope you know the difference between a median and a mean. Mean is when you add all of them and divide by the total number. Median is when you simply arrange them and pick the value in the center. Okay. Hmm? So, and replace the center value with that. Okay. So, when you do that, what's going to happen? You start with this particular image. You end up getting, uh, what has happened now? You start with the image and you end up getting the center point. You can see it's not 110 in case of a pepper or it's not 140 in case of a salt, but rather it's certain decent number which uh, currently matches with the neighborhood, which currently matches with the neighborhood, right? Isn't that a cool idea? So no simple averaging, okay. no simple averaging, rather uh, the value has been aptly replaced and whatever the background, if at all there was a black dot in a green background, so the black dot will be automatically replaced by a green, right? Instead, if at all they had simply averaged it, it would have become light green to dark green or maybe from a, a dark green to light green, changing even the background also. Okay. So the median filters, okay, uh, which are non-linear filters, order-based filters. Sometimes it is the median filter. What all other options you can have? Sometimes what you can do is there is also max and minimum filters. There can also be max filter and there can be a min filter so what does that mean so you do the arrangement something like this what if there are too many zeros what if there are too many uh, pepper elements there are too many black dots then what you can do you are uh, rather happy picking the value in the uh, maximum side so that would be a max filter a retain you know replace the center pixel with the maximum value if at all there are too many white dots that have come you are better off uh, replacing the center value with the minimum quantity okay hmm? depends on how worse the situation is so as i told you averaging may not be a good idea all the time so sometimes it is the median filter so and sometimes it can be the max filter or the min filter this one is a standard template to uh, do that as you can see when he did it with that of a median filter you can see earlier the normal averaging filter did not perform better but now with the median filter the image is much better the green background of the pcb has been aptly uh, retained okay hmm? and everything otherwise these dots of this particular transistor right the eight terminals of this particular ic whatever they were in trouble because and they were in danger of washing out these terminals were in danger of uh, you know uh, being shorted and these dots they were not at all visible i would say okay what the thing the median filter so two types of filters one is the linear set of filters the gaussian filter or the uh, averaging filter and then there is order statistic filter in module four i think we will be further revisiting this in the uh, noise section what can possibly go wrong okay there will be noise in images also okay hmm? got this thing so two types of filter and by the way now you are wondering one thing that did not come out our mind when do we use an averaging filter and where exactly do we use a, a gaussian filter okay so we will see more of this particular thing and when you go to 
the analysis in the frequency domain where it justified where it is justified and we will be also studying the butterworth filter right what we have studied in the uh, signal processing digital signal processing that will be studying once again okay hmm? so now the next class we will be studying sharpening filters before that what we will do let us go to matlab and let us try to do certain uh, we will see one example okay how to generate a mask for a, a gaussian filter how does the mask look like and uh, let us take a image let us take a image and i will also show you the various matlab uh, you know demo files that are available for us be there i think the screen has gone black hmm? let me let me come there hmm? okay so five more minutes i will just show you that i'm uh, sort of disappointed not disappointed i can't help it hmm? uh that uh, most of you do not have a laptop now do not go to your parents and pressurize them to um, buy the buy your laptop or something okay hmm? don't do that maybe when class start you can try things here hmm? okay wait a second now let me share with you the matlab screen uh yeah here we are hmm? now i think uh, can you see the matlab screen somebody hmm? okay thank you ha huh. okay hmm? so uh, yeah so yesterday's uh, example yesterday we were uh, here right somewhere so yesterday i had shown you how to generate a mask in matlab so it is simple the expression was uh, once n comma n once n comma n what does it do Say if at all I tend n is equal to five, and once n comma n if at all I do, uh, say or let me hmm, say n is equal to five. Once n comma n is nothing but uh, one 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 one. Okay, see, this is uh, once n comma n means uh, this thing only. Okay, hmm? five rows and five columns, right? A square mask is what we want all the time. Hmm? Then after what sort of it? The averaging, right? That's why entire value shall be divided by twenty-five. Hmm? So then we are ready with the mask. We just have to filter the image with this particular mask. Yesterday we had seen it, right? Yesterday we have seen the image also. The increased order, the image was becoming much and much blur. Okay. Today what we will see? Today we will see how to generate the Gaussian mask. So generating the Gaussian mask. What is the catch? By the way. Mm, so whatever you study in theory is cool, but then when you try to implement it, uh, uh, you should be careful about the formula and the kind of situation that you are going to encounter. Okay, so let me show you uh, here. Mm, yeah, so here is the expression for the Gaussian mask. Mm? You can see my screen, right? Here is the expression for the Gaussian mask. So what you have to do? You have to take the horizontal pixel value. And you have to take the vertical pixel value. You have to start from the center, okay? You have to start from the center, and then you have to choose this value of sigma. You have to choose the value of sigma there, okay? Hmm. What shall be the value of uh, sigma? And then uh, you have to generate the mask. So how do you do this thing exactly in MATLAB? So uh, here, hmm. so. Uh, Okay, so here you can see uh, how it has been done. I think ready masks are available. I, I did not uh, know or something what happened. So what I have done is I have taken some random value of sigma of zero point five. I have taken a four cross four marker, which is a crime act. So I should not do that. Okay, wait a second. Let me change it to five cross five. Hmm? Uh, accent bias also not needed, but uh, anyway. Hmm? So just for the ease of uh, I have taken. So you can see my MATLAB screen now, right? Okay, then what I have done is I have written a formula. So if at all it is five cross five, hmm, I should start from the center. The values on either side. Okay, from the center, values on the either side. Okay, what is this particular number? X minus one divided by two to one. Then X minus one minus two. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me uh, here. Okay. Uh, let me okay clear all. Yeah, x is equal to y is equal to. Let me just uh, hmm? 
I create a template first. I will create a template first here of zeros. Hmm? So now uh, IMM is a template of all zeros. Then afterwards I start from, okay, okay, what is this value? Hmm? Then I start from minus one, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, just to uh, make sure I pick the value so that the value in the center. Then I simply add them. Then I simply add them with x divided by two plus one and y divided by two plus one. And here I simply write the formula. Okay. Why this happened? Because uh, e to the power minus x, uh, x square plus y squared by sigma square. It was applicable from the center. But my values were not from the center. I should start from uh, where? In MATLAB, I have to start from the corner, right? So here were my actual values. That's why I have scaled them. Hmm? That is what uh, explains this. Uh, that's what explains these two uh, additions that I have done here. And then the program has been written and how does it look like by the way so for this particular example for what i have written a five cross five mass hmm? wait a second look at the four cross four is better hmm? uh, so let me take a larger value uh, why that is happening is because i have to written a, a simple program hmm? uh, where is uh, divided by two plus one is creating issues five divided by two plus one was creating Issues now this is fine maybe hmm? okay okay so mesh wait a second uh, where did that uh, figure go okay be there okay so oh, hmm? so uh, here Yes. Now wait. Let me show you. Four cross four only. Just for symbolic sake. Hmm? I'll just take four cross four. Why I took four cross four is because what I've written is uh, you know not so you know, properly done. Okay. So this is that particular uh, mesh diagram. Okay. So just like you have stem and you have plot, there is something called as mesh also, which will let you analyze the two dimensional thing with elevation okay as you can see this particular thing now can you see this particular screen can you see the screen somebody somebody can you see this particular thing the mesh diagram okay hmm. now can you darshan can you see the screen uh, figure can you see the figure on uh, thing okay hmm. so this is one more way to Analyze the two cross two things with uh, elevation. Okay, so now suppose if at all I take uh, a 10 cross 10, you will realize what is the shape of uh, hmm. whereas it's a box, it's a box for a averaging filter. Okay, hmm. it's a normally a box for an averaging filter, whereas here it turns out to be uh, you know uh, this kind of uh, peak. Hmm. Uh, yeah, wait. Uh, here we have hmm? okay. Hmm? Now, uh, can you see this thing? Can you see the figure? Can you see the figure? Okay, somebody can ping this. Okay, so then now this is for sigma equal to 0 0.5. Okay, this is for sigma equal to 0 0.5. Now, let me change sigma. I will go for uh, something like I don't know what will happen. I, I made it one, hmm? I have made it one. Now let me see. I want to understand what is the impact of the sigma there. Okay. Now can you see what change has happened? When I made the sigma is equal to one, the variance, okay, the deviation, the, the bell shape has become a wider. The bell has become wider. Okay. For this particular thing. So this is more a smooth thing. But so we will realize this when we go for uh, in the frequency domain. You remember that Gibbs phenomenon. Sudden transition is not a good idea. Hmm? Sudden transition is always not a good idea. Okay. If at all, I simply use a mask of our, uh, uh, which is that. Now, let me show you how a typical, uh, this mask will look like. What? Our uh, normal 5 cross 5 averaging mask looks like. It's a box. Okay. Hmm? So, our averaging mask. 
so it's not visible on the screen wait a second see our averaging mass our typical averaging mass now can you see this our averaging mass is nothing but a box when you go to frequency domain we will realize we will also see the ringing effect you know the gibbs phenomenon remember uh, what did gibbs phenomenon had actually uh, there was um, you know uh, transitions at the edges uh, near the transition there are overshoots and undershoots sort of ringing effect we will see that hmm? okay so uh, this was about our uh, typical uh, normal filters tomorrow's class we will do we will see and now there is your one more class schedule next let me stop this uh, here itself so tomorrow what we'll do we'll continue with uh, the median filter small demo and then i will show you uh, how do we use how do we do sharpening filters okay by smoothing how do we use sharpening filters okay mm -hmm. thanks for joining the classes are boring i understand and uh, it will be interesting only when uh, you involve okay it's interesting only when you involve so you have to do some small uh, programming example so those who have laptops at least i expect them to be curious and uh, uh, you can share screen with your friends okay mm -hmm. in the evenings and you can try out uh, this okay mm -hmm. so thanks for joining let me stop here okay bye